had to check. Day 17 of our journey, uh, just gathering together online, just uh, to trust in God, to pray for people, and uh, yeah, to listen to God and, and what He's telling us in His Word. Day 17, let's wait a second before um, we kick off today. Great to see you all here and great to be with all of you. So we've, um, so I hope these sessions have been blessing you. I hope these have genuinely blessed you so far. Again, these are very open sessions. So I always say, you know, if you've missed, it's been 16 days, this is day 17, I can't believe it. So uh, if you haven't been on this journey with us, I'd say go back, go to Instagram, uh, probably the best uh, place to grab these videos. We've got day one to day 16 so far, or go into YouTube, um, and all the videos are there for you, day one to day 16. We'll be po I post them every single night, of course, and uh, I know they're gonna bless you. All right, perfect. So, what have we got so far today? Maybe wait a couple of seconds before we can go forward. Uh, like I said, we've been on a journey, but the journey is not just about, again, it's not about um, speaking, um, you know, motivational words, but it's really trusting that in, in God's word. And God's word has the power to change people. God's word has the power to bring incredible results in your life. So we're, we're leaning into, into the wisdom of God, into the favor of God, into all the blessings of God. See, I can't do anything. All I can do is point you to the one who can. Uh, I always say this to people, you know, we can't, we might not be, uh, be able to save somebody from depression, but we can point to the one that spoke uh, when people had depression. And, he, and, and when Jesus walked on earth, he encountered every kind of disease, right? And, um, and actually the Bible, you know, kind of makes that scope. It says, you know, um, Jesus took every, he took all our sicknesses and carried all our pains. Um, and then it says, with his stripes, we are healed. So because he took all our sicknesses and pain, by his stripes, we are healed. So again, let's quickly go into what we've been doing. Let's do a bit of a recap, just to make sure that everyone's on the same page. But this recap is gonna be very powerfully linked to what we're doing today. So stick with me here. We talked about the fact that sin came into this world, right? Through one man. We talked about the fact then there's been years and years of sinning and, and so God brought in something called the law, all right? And it's very important for you to kind of know the difference between law and what you're under today. So there is a big difference. God brought in the law, okay, to show men when they were sinning. It's as simple as that. So men would know that what I'm doing is a sin. What I'm doing is a sin. And we talked about the fact that many legal systems, probably every single one of them, is based on that law. And that law was the Ten Commandments, right? And it's very simple. When man sinned, they would be punished. There is a punishment. We can see that punishment alive and active in the world today. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son. Um, it, there's a verse in the Bible that says, you know, to know the love of God is this. While we were still sinners, Christ came for us. While we were still sinners, while we were still dead in our sins, Christ came for us. And that's a powerful statement. It's saying that God loves us so much, he sent his son. And his son was, um, and, and now what, ha what happens is you've got to know that, especially be believers who believe in Christ, right, have got to know that the laws of this world don't that the law the law the ten commandments doesn't apply to them anymore now for those who don't believe yet the law is still in place because when something somebody sins and and they say oh something bad's going to happen to me that's quite kind of a natural response of the world right oh my gosh in fact it's kind of funny when i tell when i tell friends or i tell people that don't know jesus yet i tell them do you want to come to church with me they say they have a very cool response in fact i've heard this response constantly they say oh you know what no if i come into church man you know the bells will fall down if i come into church man the ceiling will collapse the place will set on fire i don't know what this response is but uh, but it's a natural response because guess what when people know when they've sinned people know and, and a lot of people go through life feeling just that little bit dirty feeling that little bit of sin in their life and going ah, i'm not re i'm not quite ready to come to church yet. I'm not quite ready to hear about God yet because you know, I, I, let me get my life together, let me get my life sorted and then I'll come into church. You know, give me a few months, Michael. Uh, and I'm like, you know, it's like saying, uh, you know, I gotta cleanse myself before I come to God and that's not God, well, that's not what God wants because while we were still in our sin, God sent Jesus. See, God gave the 10 commandments not so we could be saved through it. He gave the Ten Commandments, or He gave the law, 
so that we would know when we were sinning and we would know that we need help. And to help us, he then sent part two. He sent the fullness of time. He said he sent his, his, his original plan. He sent his son to take all the sins of all humanity, of all the world, past, present, and future. And that's what happened on the cross. On the cross, Jesus carried the sins of all the world. He carried, and, and with that sin, you remember what came in with that sin, right? The curse came in. Sickness came in. Death came in. Jesus carried all those, and we've been on that trajectory over the last few days, just remembering. So as a child of God now, remember that you have a unique position. You were dead in, with Christ, so you died with Christ. You were crucified with Him. You died with Him, and, and God raised you from the dead with Him and put you in Him. Today, your unique position, child of God, is you're in Christ. And in Christ, you're called to do two things. You're called to live a very different life. Um, so you're called to live by faith, that's number one. So we talked a little bit about that yesterday. In Christ, you are fully righteous today. So when God looks at you, he sees no sin anymore. And it doesn't matter if you did a sin today. What you've got to remember is yesterday we talked about the power of the righteousness of faith speaks. So when you, when you commit a sin, right? And it doesn't matter what sin. A lot of people in the world are trying to fix their sins. They're trying to say, oh, I didn't do it. I dropped the ball again. Um, I did this. I'm addicted to this habit. And I keep doing this habit. Um, I'll try to get better, you know, or I'm trying to kick this addiction. I want to quit smoking. I had a cigarette today. I'll try to do better. Now, my point is, once you're in Jesus, you got to live by a different standard. Because a lot of people think, oh my gosh, now I've sinned. I've got to ask God to forgive me. And there's this whole system in the world, and it's always stayed like that. People getting confused about, okay, I sinned. Now I have to make some sort of gesture towards God or say, I'm sorry, or plead for his forgiveness. But that's not what God is saying today. Um, a lot of actually, it's 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 really kind of struck me that a lot of people seem to say, you know, I don't I don't know if God answers my prayers or hears my prayers because I don't get a response right away. All right, um, and and the truth is, you know, you'd be scared if you did get a response, uh, and God doesn't want to freak you out, so he's not he's gonna he's gonna choose but probably not to answer you audibly. But what what's really incredible, he says that. Uh, everything has been supplied through the cross. That's what God wants you to know. Your healing, paid for. Your, um, your blessing, paid for. Um, you know, your, finance, your finances, help with your finances, paid for. And God calls this grace. So God took all the sins of your life that you would ever commit, put them on Jesus, and God punished him. On that cross, Jesus experienced excruciating pain. He paid the full brunt of God's wrath. So, so at that cross, something very, very powerful happened. God unleashed the wrath for everybody's sins, for all of humanity's sins, on this perfect lamb, on this perfect sacrifice. And right there, those sins do not exist in your life anymore. So if you're thinking, oh, but I just did this yesterday, just your prayer today as, a, as the righteousness of Christ or the righteousness of God in Christ just has to say, Father, thank you. That sin paid for by Jesus. I receive your righteousness and abundance of grace because uh, that's what that's what it says so let's look at a few verses we talked about this we, yesterday we said the righteousness of faith speaks in this way um, you know and at the end of that paragraph so that's Romans 10 verse 6 and it says for, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation I love that because it says you got to believe in your heart that you are righteous Good, that on that cross, Jesus, and it's not just fake righteousness, because on that cross, if you believed in Jesus, that means you accept him as your perfect offering. And you got to believe that on that cross, Jesus took your sin and God immediately transferred his righteousness to you. And it's an eternal righteousness for, for the rest of your life. So at that moment, when you sin, you got to believe that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. So um, if you want to profess your faith for the next few days, try this. Say nonstop, I am, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. See, because we read a bunch of verses that told you where you are today. God put you in Christ. God sees you in Christ. God sees perfect righteousness uh, that Jesus carried. Remember, Jesus came full of grace and truth. He knew no sin. He had no sin. He did no sin, but he took your sin and became sin. There's a very powerful story um, in the Old Testament where the Israelites, who are God's chosen people, they're walking 
um, and, they, and, they, and they start to murmur, they start to complain. They're, they're walking through the wilderness and God took them to the wilderness because they didn't really believe yeah, that God had given them the land flowing with milk and honey. So the first time around, they didn't believe that. So they kept this long walk in the wilderness, right? And, and during that time, um, and, and during that time, God gives them the big 10, the 10 commandments. Now, what's really powerful is if you read the time before that, God would just supply. They used to murmur and God would just supply their needs. So for instance, if they wanted water, God brought the water out. If they wanted, um, if they, God kept them, you know, God kept them in a cloud of uh, fire by night. So he provided heating at night and a cloud, um, you know, of, uh, yeah, a, a, a winter cloud in, 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 in the day. So in the heat of the sun, they actually had uh, God's very own personalized air conditioning. Let's put it like that. So they had a beautiful picture of, of grace. God was showing them what grace could look like as his chosen people. But the moment the law came in to show them where they were sinning, right? And the Israelites asked for that law. The Israelites asked God, you know, whatever you come out, command us, we can do it. So God gave them the Ten Commandments. And exactly after that, when they murmured, when they sinned, God showed them that punishment would come. So there's, a, there's an incredible one there, uh, a story where... This, uh, they, they start to complain um, once again, but this time these poisonous snakes come out of everywhere, uh, come out of the desert, just come out from nowhere and start to bite them. And the, and the poisonous bites were deadly. So, they, so people began to actually physically drop dead uh, or scream in pain and then drop dead. Remember, there is always, whenever there's sin, there's always a punishment. God has to execute judgment. That's what the world... When I say this respectfully, that is what the world sometimes experiences. They, they, they know that when they do something wrong, there's going to be some impending judgment. But what God says, God tells Moses to do something very, very strange. And it is strange. Let's put it like this. He says, take a snake, take a bronze snake, take a snake made of bronze and lift it up on a pole and lift it up. And whoever sees, that's it. Whoever sees the snakes and looks up to that, on, onto that snake and believes at that moment, they will be healed. And Moses is like, what? You know, yeah, I can't imagine Moses' state, but Moses obeys, he just does it, right? And, 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 and that's what he does. He takes that snake, that bronze snake that he, that, he, that he melts, he takes a bronze snake, goes out, and he tells the Israelites, just look, all you gotta do is look and believe, and you will be saved. And, what's, and what it tells us is very clear. It tells us only those who looked and believed, all those who looked and believed, were saved. Now that Jesus repeats that story when he meets Nicodemus, uh, when he walks on the earth and he tells Nicodemus that, you know, God so loved the world, he gave his only son. He says, like that snake in the desert, uh, I, the son of man, he says, he uses that word, the son of man. If you're wondering about that, it's because all through the Bible, there are prophecies of, made of Jesus that Jesus would come and save people. There are, there are real strong prophecies. So Jesus was fulfilling all those prophecies like little tick boxes. It was beautiful from the things he spoke from the, from the, uh, from the healings that he, that, he, that, he, um, that he conducted, the miracles he conducted. He was fulfilling certain prophecies about him. So he said, um, he said just like the, the, the snake was lifted in the desert, the son of man, me, I have to be lifted up like that. And that's what happened to him on the cross. On the cross, why is there a serpent, right? Why the, why the bronze serpent? Because bronze is a picture of God's judgment. So on that pole or on that cross, Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin. He was carrying all your sins. So imagine all the punishment that was headed for you fell on him. All the curse that was headed for you fell on him. All the sickness that was headed for you fell on him. And that's why the Bible says he was, he was pierced for our, he was wounded for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment for our peace fell upon him. And what's incredible is the, um, the Bible tells us that people, when they looked at the snake, they were immediately healed. Do you know why? Because they saw that, that the snake was bronze. There was a punishment already given. So every single sin was carried on Jesus' body. Every single sickness that was destined for you in your life fell on his body. So today, there's a very powerful saying, and I want to end with this. It says, there is therefore no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
So today for the child of God, Jesus doesn't look at you and your sins. And, and, and even if you sinned yesterday, if you sinned now, if you sinned this morning, it's gone. All you have to do is profess with your mouth, say, thank you, Jesus. You took that on the cross. I'm free from it. I right now in this moment, I receive your righteousness and abundance of grace. And we talk about that. We said that those who receive abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness will reign in life. Um, and what that means is at the moment you sin and it's a, it's, it's that, that verb is the present continuous. So that means you keep receiving his righteousness uh, and you start to reign in life. If, if you're feeling sick, don't say I'm feeling sick. Say, Lord Jesus, you took this sickness on the cross. I right now receive your righteousness and abundance of grace for healing. If you're getting angry with your wife or, or you're getting angry with your husband, at that moment say, Lord, you took this on your body. Even before you have a chance to express that anger, try something different because the righteousness of faith speaks. So speak according to what God's done. Give him glory for what he's done. At that moment, say, Lord, you took this fight. You know, the, 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 the punishment for this fight, you, you've already taken. You know, what, what, what the Bible says is Jesus stripped all of sin's power at the cross. He dismantled all the powers at the cross. So that, and it says sin, and here's another very powerful one. He says, sin has no dominion over you, for you are not under law but under grace. See, those who believe in Jesus today don't have to keep trying to earn God's blessings. They don't have to keep trying, God, I did these good things. I gave to the poor. Now you got to bless me. No, no. God says it's a free gift. The Bible tells us it's a free gift of grace. It's a free gift of righteousness. So remember these three things go together. Righteousness. You are fully righteous after the cross. You are fully righteous in Christ. You are in Christ, filled with all His blessings. Um, you, are, you, can, you are completely healthy because you're in Him. Remember that. And the health has been given. All you got to do is receive the grace at that moment with your mouth. The righteousness of faith speaks. How are these uh, blessings accessed? How, how is every blessing in Christ accessed? Through faith. It's as simple as that. And the Bible tells us that. Um, it says, with the mouth confession is made for your salvation right away. If you want to be saved from something, confess, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And what that's, and, and that sentence uh, comes from the same verse I've talked to you about, uh, you know, quite a few times on this journey. For, uh, for, for he made Jesus who knew no sin to become sin for us so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So today God sees you fully righteous. Today you have no sin, you have no sickness. You don't need to accept the sickness. Remember that you can actually say this sickness that's coming on me, this lying symptom, I reject it because it cannot be on me. It fell on Jesus. Remember, I told you about that story. I remember saying this out loud. This pain cannot be in my body. And I say this constantly. In fact, I teach my kids this uh, even at their young age. I tell them, you know what? When you get a pain in your body, if you're going through any pain, just say pain leave right now in Jesus name. You have no right to be here because you were already judged on the cross. You already fell on the body of my savior at the cross. What a powerful moment for you, right? What an incredible moment. I wish you tons and tons of these moments as you go through journey with Jesus. You have a new life. Don't start, don't continue to live like the rest of the world. In fact, tomorrow, and it was planned for today, but God has his own plans with these sessions. Uh, tomorrow we'll talk about a very powerful one. It says, uh, actually the Bible tells us beautifully in um, don't just follow the ways of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it tells us, how do you do that? You get into the word and you change your mind. You renew your mind with God's word. Um, so I, I'm going to stop there. I hope this has blessed you. Today, you don't have to accept sickness. You don't have to accept pain. You don't have to accept condemnation. There is now no condemnation for you who are in Christ. So when, a very important thing also is don't condemn other people. Don't put them under condemnation. Don't condemn your kids. Don't condemn the people around you. Just receive the grace of God. See, right now in this moment, I'm feeling like condemning my wife or condemning my husband. But in this moment, Lord, I choose to receive I, I thank you that all the sins of mine, my wife's, they, they fell on you at the cross. So in this moment, I'm receiving your righteousness and abundance of grace. And you will reign in life. You will reign um, in life through, your, through an incredible grace-filled marriage, grace-filled health. Remember, you're not under law. You are under grace. 
Um, sin has no, a really powerful one also to end with, sin has no dominion over you for you are not under law, but you're under grace. Sin already fell on your substitute at the cross. It was a divine exchange. Sin has no power over you. What a powerful statement to make. Sin has no power over you for you are not under law, under grace. Um, I hope you've enjoyed these Bible verses. It's the power of God and the power of the word that, um, that accomplish all these incredible things in your life. Uh, thank you very much once again. Let's pray for you. Father, I want to thank you for everybody on this journey with us. I want to thank you for everybody that's tuned in either on Instagram or video. We thank you for the perfect gift of your son. You loved us so much while we were sinners. You still sent your son. Today, we receive right now in this moment the free gift of righteousness that you've given us in Christ and an abundance of your grace and favor for every area of our lives. We receive that in Jesus' name and all you got to do is say amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. See you tomorrow.